Happy April 24th, Wacky Wednesday, and how wacky is it? Well, I put my sports bra on inside out, expected it to look the same. No, we had to take it off and reverse it. Yeah, and why did that occur? Because I was just patternizing my dressing. And I just picked something up and just put it on without actually looking at it and consciously adjusting it before I made a mistake. Monday morning, I am watching the lane that I'm in and all of a sudden my brain goes to autopilot. Next thing I know, I'm on a ramp going on a highway in a direction to another location that I'm not to be at today. So I had to go up further, get on another ramp, exit off another ramp, and head another direction, creating delays because I wasn't in my due diligence of staying in my conscious mind and making my movements from my conscious mind because that's how quickly autopilot and subconscious literally take over your vehicle physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and etherically. And next thing you know, you're going through old paradigm, old patterns, and that wasn't your intention. So with this conscious thought, we've got to kind of empty out those reservoirs. And of course I do that through past life regression, through regression work. I also help to stabilize through zone technique therapy and advanced Reiki. And I do these things on myself, but let's talk about what the energy patterns are doing, right? So what Spirit's showing me right now is it's pouring down rain, but I've got on my dry gear. I've got my umbrella. I've got my water boots on, but does that prevent me 100% waterproofing me? No, it doesn't. I'm gonna get splashed from one direction or the other because it is the weather elements. And how do we know that to be true? Because we've experienced it before. No matter how many things we do to keep ourselves dry, depending on the type of rain, is it a soft rain, a hard rain, a torrential rain with wind? We're going to get wet in one place or another. So energies are gonna do what they're going to do. Weather patterns are gonna do what they're gonna do. You're just taught to do your best to glide through them to arrive in safety to whatever destination, whatever task whatever you're implementing at that time. But we have all these different hiccups that are out of our control. Now, on top of that, if we are a spiritual awakened being, we're taking in a lot of things everyone else is saying. And if you know my pattern by now, what Spirit has guided me to share, is the pattern is, this is coming. This is going to occur. Some people get it in more detail through their channeling, through messages of one sort or another, and they're telling you how it's going to unfold moving forward. But quite honestly, no one really has the direct path of how it's going to occur because the energies affect spirit as well. And so we have forces out there that could maybe manually be creating some invisible obstacle courses. We could have natural rotation of planets that are creating invisible obstacle courses. All the while our feet are planted on Mother Earth, not even realizing that incoming is occurring from all different directions. So while the energy is doing what it do, is doing right now, it's creating this sort of a slump. And the slump is really truly a merge and a purge of the old to release. But our bodies are feeling tired. We're getting deep bone aches. We're getting allergies like we feel like we've never experienced before. 
Some are landing people on their back because they just feel inundated. And so the body is trying to do a self-cleaning. It's trying to do a detox. It's trying to help you be in survival mode because that's what the systems of the body does. It works synergistically to help self-clean, self-regulate, counterbalance what's going on from exterior. But when we're bringing in a lot of things interiorly and we are not rotating and keeping our wheels greased and in movement, we're going to feel even more clogged up, bogged down, and blocked up. And so one of the things Spirit keeps showing me is the mental that keeps getting bogged up that's creating this rotation of thought on top of thought on top of thought so you get you know a molehill made into a mountain you get a mountain made into giant andes <laughs> and this sandy is just saying put the brakes on stop that's what spirit showing me you're not conditioned to head up these mountains. You're not conditioned to just get a backpack on and head up through the Andes mountains or, or do a marathon of some sort because you haven't been doing the work to get you there. And so when you start with the, just the basic day of it and what you're adding on and yet you're expecting your physical, mental, emotional, etheric bodies to keep up and really what it's saying is slow your roll take your time to get into a smaller space of consciousness take the smaller space of consciousness see how you can expand it and get it to last longer right so if one of the things spirit has me practice is let's say I'm driving and I want to stay in my conscious mind. And yet there's this waterfall of thoughts that come in. It could be my to-do list. It could be things that have already occurred that I need to maybe review and maybe repattern differently. Or I have a kid in the car or I have a phone call coming in or the radio's playing or my thought is what I'm going to do when I get to my destination. So there's all these thoughts coming in that actually take you out of the conscious moment of what does the asphalt look like in front of you? How is your car maneuvering while you're operating 10 and two, staying in your lane? How long can you stay in a neutral conscious mode without actually feeling the subconscious automatically shifting your transmission? It's automatic. And so instead of getting upset, just go, oh, hey, I recognize that. Back to the current moment. Back to the current moment. So if I'm listening to a child in my car, or I'm on a phone call with someone else, or maybe something is playing on the radio, how much of my attention is on the song or whatever's going on on the radio? How much is my attention going on maybe with a kid in a car? How much attention is actually happening in the current moment? Because what can I really do about what it is I'm going to do as soon as I step into the office? That kind of has to wait. Because that's moments to come. Right? That's not the current what's happening now. My to-do list is not current unless I'm in the midst of maybe organizing it. And so I'm patterning it in my brain. So you can get yourself in a conscious mind and all of a sudden these antennas with these suction cups come out and they just suck you right out of that, which is why conscious is 5%, unconscious, subconscious is 95%, and it pretty much governs everything. So it keeps you sidetracked. It keeps you in fight or flight. It keeps that fluid of adrenaline 
that flows through the body that actually is drowning out and silencing very, very important systems within the body because it's saying, hey, I'm in crisis. And that crisis could have multiple levels of crisis. Either way, my body's saying, I don't trust where I am. I need some survival juice so I can get out of here fast, but it's wreaking havoc. So if you were to have a real adrenaline rush to get away from something, you would immediately have an adrenaline rush to get the heart pumping so that you, your breath then goes shallow and all your thought is to get the physical out of the way of an emergency without creating harm or an emergency. You see what I'm saying? But we're constantly leaking that fluid that valuable fluid. So when you really do need it, you do not have the same coordination that you might have had if you had just really used that reserve when you needed it. And there's not that often if you think about it throughout your day that you actually need that much pumping through your system. So manual override is required. Manual override. I trust my breath. I trust my awareness of my peripheral. I trust that I'm in safety in this moment. I trust that I can pull myself into the conscious mind and that I can take the unconscious, the subconscious, and I can close that door and not let it seep in. And so it takes skill, it takes tips, it takes tools, it takes techniques. Because not only are you using your spiritual athletic tools, tips, and techniques, you're also using a physical and a mental and emotional override. And so this may feel very unfamiliar and it may feel uncomfortable. Just like when you start anything, it feels weird. But if you can practice a few minutes every day and every time your mind goes to slip, you bring it back. So somewhere along the line, someone thought multitasking was a talent. Multitasking is frying you out. It's literally taking a power washer to your circuitry board and things are shorting out. And you may not notice it in the now moment, but you will notice it over time. And so it's requiring a changing of filters, a welcoming of a new perception through translation of what is occurring. It is requiring a self check-in mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, etherically. Where am I in this moment? What does my physical body feel like? How can I just say, hey, you're okay. We're good. And even if I know nothing, I can stop, drop, sit, connect with my breath and go woosa a few times and allow my heart rate to come back to some sort of homeostasis, which then allows the digestive tract to know it's safe to process. You know, it's safe to eliminate. I don't need to hold on to anything in that digestive tract. I can let my blood flow. I can allow my lungs to fully Bring in that air and expand, do its thing and expel. So by simply stop, drop, sitting and connecting with your breath is a start. And you start multiple times during the day as you find the suction cups taking you in every which direction, which is actually wreaking tremendous unhealth and unease within the bodies.
It's siphoning valuable life force energy. And only you can be the commander of it. You can allow it and continue it until you get yourself in a crisis. Or you can say, I'm gonna take control of this now and I'm gonna do my best today in this now moment to understand that I am God Spark Energy. I am a creator of God Spark Energy. And I will command the movements and the thoughts and the feelings of this body. And I will allow things to bubble up and to, to merge and to purge and to give forgiveness and love and fill myself, this vessel, with as much love and compassion and understanding. And I will bring harmony to every cell within every part of my physicality. And I will restore and I will give sound bites of restoration and I will feel it through my rejuvenation because I am the commander of thyself. That's getting to know who you are. And there's no wrong here, people. It's just programming. It's habits. It's just reformulating those habits. And literally taking an eraser and going, you know what? I don't need that in my circuitry board anymore. And I'm just going to... Yeah. And every time it comes back, whoop, nope, 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 nope. You no longer serve. Yeah. All right. So much love on this Wacky Wednesday. Enjoy your day. If I can help you in any way, info at embodimentofthesoul.com. Zoom sessions are available. You may find them extremely uh, boostful, you know, during this time. And just give you enough of that edge where you're like, oh, I'm self-teaching. And some of the things Sandy showed me and that we went through intuitively, I'm able to tap in and able to understand my own power. All right? Like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Make sure you comment. Bye.